Today's topic is going to be about indecisiveness and overthinking because I kind of realize at this point, especially in the VTubing scene, is that when you overthink things, you tend to spend so much time thinking that you don't take action and it ends up really hurting your career in the long run. And so I'd like to welcome you all back to Mari Monday where I answer questions that you ask me from my marshmallow and the three questions that I noticed all kind of stem from indecisiveness and overthinking. So I would like to address those today and try to give some advice and hopefully, you know, if you are the person who sent me these questions that are watching, I hope that these questions can help you. Anyone else, you know, please, this may apply in your own life. Take what I say and leave the rest behind. And yeah, let's get right into it. I have a question. How do you collab with other VTubers? and how do you talk to them? You know, you would think that collabing with other VTubers and like talking to other VTubers gets better the longer you've been a VTuber and oh boy, how wrong is that? Trying to set up VTuber collabs is one of the most stressful things I have ever had to do as a VTuber because every VTuber I talk to besides like my friend Yumi is an introvert. It is so hard to get them to want to talk because they're all so socially anxious and because like the thing is being introverted is not a bad thing. It does can sometimes limit your abilities to want to communicate with other people because you're so shy and you don't really have either the social battery or the energy or maybe you don't have the social skills and you're very awkward and that usually makes me get left on red or ghosted because so many VTubers are just scared to reply to me. And the only way that I could make a collab work is to just keep reaching out to VTubers until one of them eventually answers me and then like continues talking with me. I get ghosted all the time for that stuff. And I think a lot of people are afraid of asking for collabs because they are afraid of that rejection. They are afraid of getting ghosted or, you know, being told no thanks, like I'm not interested. Or if you deal with someone who's super cloud chasey, they'll be like, oh, you don't have enough following just yet. Like there's like all these different reasons why people make excuses and basically say, well, I shouldn't even bother asking. When I think a lot of people don't realize there are so many like upcoming VTubers, so many new people coming into the community. You kind of have to treat it like, well, I don't know why, but the best example that I could think of is cold calling, which I mean, it's not like you're trying to make a sale or like cold DMing, but you are going to have to just keep reaching out to people. It doesn't have to be the same person. If that person is just not responding to you, then well, that's fine. Clearly something in their life is preventing them from wanting to continue the collab. And there are other people who will definitely want to collab with you. So in terms of like how to talk to them, I don't want to give the generic, generic advice of just saying, oh, just go talk to them because I'm really bad with icebreakers. Like I'm really bad at trying to talk to somebody and like starting that conversation. But once the conversation gets going, I can carry the conversation and I know how to like end a conversation as well. But when it comes to like icebreakers, that is something that I struggle with a lot too. And the thing that's really helped me personally when it comes to icebreakers is Usually if I'm DM DMing somebody about a collab, I already have the collab in mind. I'll say, hey, you know, I notice you like this game. I'm hosting a collab on this date um, at this time. Would you be interested in it? Or you could say like, oh, um, I have a, I have a group that I'm putting together. Uh, would you be interested in joining? What days or times work best for you? Things like that, like kind of already having what the collab is going to be consisted of, like prepared. And then offering that to them so that way they can have the option of saying, oh, I'm either interested or I'm either not. And again, if they leave you on red, please, please, please don't take that so personally. It happens to the best of us. It even happens to me. And it's just part of the content creation sphere. Nobody owes you their time or attention. Just like you don't owe anyone their your time or attention. So yes, when it comes to collabs, I highly encourage you keep trying Keep reaching out to new people. There's so many people who would love to collab with you if you just talk to them. And unfortunately, you do have to be the one to take that step to reach out. You can't just expect people to come up and talk to you for a collab because every VTuber is introverted. All right, so let's talk to our next marshmallow. Hey, I'm starting a PNG challenge that I hope to then turn to a VTuber when I can afford it. I'm having a hard time coming up with a name and I notice almost every VTuber has a different name. How did you come up with your name? 
Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> you really think that my name is unique? I feel like there's so many Maris out there. Like that is like the most generic VTuber name at this point because of how common it is. Honestly, coming up with a name is pretty difficult for content creators in general. It's not just like a VTuber thing. Like I, it's so weird because when it comes to like YouTubers or live streamers, there's like a divide, right? There's the one type of content creator who comes up with their username as like some kind of gamer tag. Like it's something that you put in like your Xbox or if you go sign up to play a game, you know, like the gamer 379 Dorito chip six that like those kind of names. Like they're not real names per se. They're just kind of like a game username. Then you have the people who do these like personal branding lifestyle names where it'll have like a first name and a last name or like it yeah that, that's pretty much all it is it's like a first name and a last name and then there is like a subcategory that kind of is a combination of both of those things where it is sounds like it could be a like someone's name but it's also kind of like a gamer tag and usually that one is like a nickname of your whatever your name is going to be it's very interesting to see where people come up with their name so how did i come up with my name um well, my name is inspired from a video game and it's not inspired from Yume Nikkei in case if anyone was thinking that. It's actually inspired from this game called Catherine. Because my name's Mari, but I wanted to come up with like a last name for myself and I got really inspired by the game Catherine that's all about these dreams and specifically nightmares. But I, uh, I really didn't want to call myself Mari Dream because I didn't want to be associated with the YouTuber dream, so I was thinking to myself, okay, well, what's like another word for dream? And well, I had studied Japanese language and culture back in college, so I thought, oh, why not just use Yume? That way I can always like have a bit more of a metaphorical sense for my name. I think for a lot of VTubers, because there's so much ties to idol culture and Japanese anime culture, a lot of people want to have Japanese names. You don't have to. Especially if your VTuber is like a representation of yourself, you could come up with pretty much like a gamer name if you want to. You could just come up with some kind of like interesting nickname. Don't use your actual real name. Please don't use your real name. Don't, don't do that. It's breaking the fourth wall here. Don't use your real name. Because obvious reasons, right? But... In terms of like your name, I feel like you don't have to make it Japanese if you don't want to. I can speak both, which is why I wanted to have a little bit of more of a metaphor stuff because Mari was just taken. So I couldn't just be Mari. I had to put something else with it. And that was like the best way that I could come up with. And, you know, Mari in Japanese, Japanese means truth. And then if you put dreams with that, it's like truthful dreams. And it's a very interesting like kanji for that so i was just trying to be clever with mine but i think for you for your vtuber it depends on like what kind of vtuber are you because if you have some kind of theme with your vtuber concept you could come up with your name that's similar to a concept like if you were a bunny vtuber you could come up with some kind of like nickname for buns or bunny or bb or something like that like it, it doesn't have to be a real name per se it can be some kind of play on of whatever your theme is. It really, you know, names are so like, there, there's so many VTuber names. There really are. And it, there's no right or wrong way to do it. The only thing that matters is make sure that the name isn't taken and then make sure it's easy to pronounce and that it's easy to remember. You can have a long name as long as it's just easy to pronounce and to remember. It doesn't have to be a short name. I think a lot of people get confused with that kind of stuff. It also depends on who your audience is. If you have a primarily English speaking audience, make your name in English. Like there's, for example, because my last name is Yume, people who, and my audience is primarily English, they don't pronounce it as Yume, they pronounce it as Yumi. So everyone thinks my name is Mari Yumi and it's not, but sometimes that ends up happening so it's like, make sure you kind of know who your target audience is. Because if you have an English audience, come up with some kind of English name, something that English people can pronounce. That would be my best suggestion when it comes to like trying to figure out a name for yourself. Oh boy, that was very hard to answer. <laughs> that was a tough one. I have never been asked that before. Okay, let's go on to our final marshmallow. What advice would you have for someone who is overthinking the negatives of content creation? Will this affect every interaction I have online? 
What if I get cancelled over something minor? What if I get harassed among other things? I'm not sure if content creation is just a leap of faith kind of mindset, but I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. Wow, okay, um, this is an amazing question because, oh god, overthinking. I feel like one thing that I would like to say to you, Anon, is that you are not alone when it comes to overthinking. I think, I, I think a lot of creators can relate to this, even myself. So I'm gonna actually keep this one up here because this is a pretty loaded question. So I wanna make sure that I answer each individual line on here. The first thing, will this affect every interaction that I have online? And I'm going to say, yes, it is. When you're overthinking, it doesn't just affect your online interactions. It affects your entire life. You're overthinking how you're going to talk to somebody. You're overthinking if you're doing your job correctly. You're overthinking if you're studying correctly or your homework. And you know, from what I have learned over this entire year going through like my own mental health journey is that overthinking stems from fear and a lot of it has to do with just how you've been treated in the past like you might have said or done something and gotten heavily criticized or maybe even yelled at for it um that causes you to stop and think to yourself okay i have to start making sure that i do everything right or else no one's gonna like me now, or i'm gonna get in trouble and it's such a toxic way to treat yourself because at some point in your life you're gonna have to realize you can't control other people's actions and yeah a lot of people try to control your actions that's why they criticize you for like doing something that they didn't like but at the end of the day remember they didn't like that thing that you did and it's not your job to correct that unless if you really care about this person and what you did was really actually bad because there's a difference between something that is objectively bad versus like, oh, that just kind of like hurt my feelings or I didn't like that kind of bad. Um, if you're hurting someone's feelings, you obviously don't want to invalidate that person's feelings. Like if you care about that person, you would apologize. But if they just didn't like, I don't know, how you said something or a video or you didn't do something that was up to their expectations then that's not your job to have to fix that unless if it is actually your job and you're being paid to do that. That sounds like I'm like kind of going wishy-washy for it, but I'm not. Because if you think about it, when you're overthinking, you're constantly having this indecisive mindset of if what I'm about to say or do going to make people who I, who I know don't give a crap about me make and make them mad. Like... I am worried about people who do not care about me. I'm worried about their feelings, but even though um they don't care about my feelings and now I'm stuck here trying to figure out what I should do. And I feel like that's not the right mindset to have. It's not about what you should do. It's about what you want to do. So this next question, what if I get canceled over something minor? People will try to cancel you over like, anything and it's true that will happen but you don't need to be afraid of that because here's the thing those people don't matter they genuinely do not matter when you become a content creator you are here to entertain a specific audience an audience that you want to have the people that really care about you and want to be around you and like your content they're not going to cancel you over something minor unless if you did something that was so horrific which then it's no longer a minor issue it's a major issue or you betrayed your audience but they would let you know that and you could learn from that if so you're getting canceled over something minor and it's something like oh i did like a shitty thing and that shitty thing was like oh i don't know um i ghosted you or something or it that person thinks that I only want to talk to them when it's convenient for me when in reality you could just be very busy or you're overthinking your response and you got too nervous to answer back like there's so many factors in life that you don't know what someone else is thinking you're not a mind reader so if you're getting canceled over something minor and it turned out that this minor thing wasn't really like anything it's more like a lack of communication then then you have the option to either talk it out with that person privately or you just move on and don't address it at all. You don't have to address every little thing that people want you to address. What if you get harassed among other things? That does happen sometimes. But to be constantly afraid of this whole what if I get harassed 
is just going to prevent you from doing the things that you want to do. Like if you want to play a game and people are trying to ha harass you or cancel you over it, um, <sighs> it's hard. It is very hard to have to just suck it up and like deal with it or whatever. However, you can ban people. You can block certain words. If you notice people are trying to call you all these things, you don't have to look at that. You don't have to read those messages. Pokemon has a whole dedicated team of people who just delete mean comments so she doesn't have to see it because it affects your mindset. Like content creation, I don't know if I want to say it's like a leap of fate kind of mindset. I think content creation is more like believing in yourself and wanting to see things to the end with your projects. Content creation, the type of mindset you should be having with that is more like a growth mindset. I may do some bad things, but I can learn from those bad things. And these bad things do not define me as a person unless if I let them define me as a person. Like you playing a game that people didn't like does not make you a bad person even if people are saying that that makes you a bad person they're not you only you can define who you are and playing a video game doesn't make you a bad person like that is actually a ridiculous thing and it's something that if you're that scared about you could play a different game if you want to but trying to constantly be a people pleaser is just going to wear you down and burn you out so my advice to you for someone who is overthinking negatives of content creation is to start journaling the positives of content creation start writing down when good things happen such as like you know x amount of people liked my post this person wrote a really nice comment or oh you know i had a really fun time today and this is why start writing the positives because you're gonna have days where a lot of negative stuff will happen and having some kind of catalog some kind, some kind of thing just something to like look at and surround yourself with saying oh wait a minute you know yes this one negative thing had happened to me but look at all this other positive stuff that has happened to me having a gratitude journal is so so helpful when it comes to battling overthinking. This is something that I like to do and it helped me realize that, wow, there's actually a lot of good things that happened in my content creation career. And I don't have to focus so much about these negative things that have happened. I have grown from these. I have learned from these and, you know, I've become a better person. And the way you measure yourself as a better person is not by what other people say about you. It's about how you measure yourself. Am I still the same person that is making all these self-pity posts on Twitter? No, I'm not. I'm this person that now makes encouraging posts and tries to like inspire other people. I try to make memes. I try to, you know, make people laugh. That means I have grown as a person because I'm no longer that same person anymore. I hope that can kind of make sense and that this can kind of help you make that one step in the right direction towards combating the over negative thinking and start helping you realize the more positive sides of content creation because there are a lot of them and with that i hope that this video could be very helpful to you hopefully you know you learn something new and it could help you be more insightful on your own journey if you would like to submit another question for mari monday please go check out my marshmallow and thank you all so much for watching. And remember, everyone, everything reminds you of something.